small steps, small incremental steps. The year is 1930, and I got to tell you, Eddie is the man. You live in Chicago, you get into trouble, jaywalking, uh, stealing, murder, shoplifting. Eddie is the attorney for you. Everybody wants Eddie. Your fault, my fault, nobody's fault. Eddie's your attorney. He's got a license to print money. It's the 1930s. Everybody's going through a depression. Not Eddie. Eddie's making it hand over fist. He's doing so well, man, he's, got, he's just got visions of sugar plums and dreams and champagne. And then that proverbial day happens. He gets a visit from someone who comes in and says, Eddie, I need you to come work for me. I own most of the gaming industry. I need you to run my dog track, my racetrack. Put it this way, Eddie. Your track, my track, nobody's track. I need you to run my gaming industry. He tells him and tells him, he said, look, I appreciate you, but at the end of the day, I got it. I'm good where I'm at. We're going to do, uh, I'm just going to keep being an attorney. The problem is Al doesn't take no very well. That's always been Al's problem. And as a result of it, he said, no, Eddie, you're going to come work for me. And I'm going to tell you, you think you got a license to print money. Wait till you run the gaming industry for me. He said, man, you can't even imagine you're, you're going to be Fort Knox in and of yourself. So he follows him. Now, you probably figured out, man, it's Chicago. It's the 1930s, right? And all of a sudden, gaming is big. Al Capone. Absolutely. But here's what you don't know about Eddie. Eddie starts making money hand over fist. And I got to tell you, he's right. He was a license to print money on an exaggerated scale. It was Fort Knox. He had so much money coming in, he didn't even know where to begin. And then all of a sudden, things change yet again. You see, Eddie brings a son into the world, Eddie Jr. And now all of a sudden, man, the world's different. Man, do I keep doing what I'm doing? Because, man, where do I leave for my son? What kind of name do I leave for my son? What kind of, what kind of trappings do I leave for him? Because if something happens to me, man, everybody's going to see him as a crony, as a, an attachment. He's just part of Al Capone. Man, as he starts taking small steps, he starts trying to wean himself back from the gaming industry, which, you know, that's going to play out. As a result of it, man, he starts taking small steps. He starts going back to church. He, start, he baptizes his child. Next thing you know, he starts praying the rosary. Small steps. And then that day comes. The FBI comes to him. Said, we need you to go against Al Capone. And he does turn on Al. As a matter of fact, that's why we get Al Capone on tax evasion. Because of Eddie. Well, now what you don't know about Eddie is five days after he, he, can, he testifies against Big Al and Al goes to jail, he ends up dead. The only thing that he has in his pocket is a rosary. Small steps. His son grows up, ends up going to the Air Force, becomes one of the first people ever, a fighter pilot, to ever win the Congressional Medal of Honor. So good at what he did. Because his dad took the small steps to make sure that he had a future all on his own, in his own name. That he's so good at what he does, we now name the airport in Chicago after him. Eddie O'Hare International. Small steps, my brother and sister Christ, you can conquer the world. That is exactly that gospel. The good Lord has taken small steps to convert the woman and bring her back to the faith. He does it by sitting by a well. Now stop, let's remember this. My brother in Christ, you know where Samaria is now. It is between, if you will, the Sea of Galilee and here in Jerusalem. It is somewhat like no man's land. They are partially Jewish and partially another nationality. Jews don't like them because they're other nationalities. The other nationalities don't like them because they're Jewish. They even worship on a different mountain. When the woman comes to the well, small steps. Let's look at it from the perspective of Jesus Christ. Christ sits by the well knowing full well that she will come to the well. He talks to her about getting some water, small steps. Then he talks to her about the living water, small steps. Then all of a sudden he talks to her that she not only has one wife, husband, two husbands, she's had five husbands, she's working on her six who's living with her. Six to a Jew is the most incomplete number of the world. My brother and sister Christ, think about what I'm telling you. Christ is the seventh man. We actually believe she probably became a religious after that incident. As a result of it, he finally tells her, I am. So man, she goes to, to him, man, I got to tell you. Man, he goes from talking to the well, speaking about water, talking about telling her where she's come from, and now he's the great I am. Look at it from her perspective. First, he's a guy sitting next to a well. He's a Jewish man. The next thing I know, he's polite. The next thing I know, he's a prophet. Then I come to find out, my brother in Christ, that he's the great I am. It happens at noon, which is the sixth hour. By the time he finishes talking to her, it's the end of the seventh hour. 
It's complete. She now knows exactly who he is. The numbers, too, represent that there's always a beginning and an end. Five loaves of bread and two fish. You had the Old Testament. The good Lord's here to feed 5,000. There's the New Testament. He's telling her, you've learned about the Old Testament. Now you're about to hear the New Testament. My brother and sister in Christ, it's small steps that win the day. Now listen to this. Go back in Scripture. All of our better players are people that can take incremental steps. So, for example, take uh, Simon of Cyrene. Simon of Cyrene in three hours, because he takes small steps, three hours. He goes from seeing Christ as a criminal to the Messiah in three hours. Think about what happens to him. He does not see one miracle. He doesn't see the blind see the lame walk of the dead rise. All he knows is, is that he's conscripted in the army, which they could do on a daily basis, up to possibly a week. That means the Romans could say, congratulations, you're in the army. That's why he's got to do it. My brother Christ, he's got two sons, Rufus and Alexander. He's got to leave, listen to this, he's got to leave them with whoever's there. Once he gets blood on him, he's going to be asked to leave, and they're going to quarantine him up to 14 days. So he doesn't see his children probably for a protracted time. If that's not bad enough, he's got to pick up a cross of a criminal. Rome kills people like there's no tomorrow. What's two more pieces of wood to them? He's taking these small steps so quickly, my brother in Christ, that he actually goes, and if you've seen the movie The Passion, somewhere along the way, he's almost helping Christ get back up. He's telling him, man, don't die here. Finish this out. Don't let him win. And then when he gets up to the top of Golgotha, did you ever see the movie? It's exactly how he was. He sees that if he leaves him, they're going to crucify him. So he's trying to stay around longer as if somehow or another his presence will protract it. And so what does the good Lord to look at him and say, that's it. You've done what I've asked you to do. Simon, I just asked you to help carry my cross. And because you did, man, you've got the blood of Christ on you. Now I bet you want to hang on to them garments. Now I bet you don't care about being quarantined. Now I bet you can't wait to tell your kids, man, it's not a lamb, it's the lamb. Small steps take Simon out of nowhere into the book of everlasting life. 2,000 years later, we still use his name. My brother and sister in Christ, if you're Saul and go to Paul, in three days, you go from the biggest hatred of Christians, butcher and a murderer, to becoming the greatest orator in Christ's arsenal. In three days, you're blind for three days. Those incremental steps in the subsequent years to get ready. My brother in Christ, he becomes the greatest player in our day, a Gentile church. We don't have a church if he's not in the game. What if Mary Magdalene gets up on Easter Sunday? All by herself. All the apostles are sleeping. Nobody's going to the tomb. If anybody has a right to say, you know what, I'm out. I've got seven deadly sins. The one guy that cured me has gone. She is so determined to take small steps, even though she can't open the tomb because of the rock. She's got to get by soldiers who've had their way. She's willing to take the small steps. My brother and sister in Christ, that's all it takes is small steps. That's why i got to get you to get in the game. My brother in Christ, 2,000 years later, I am begging you, if there's ever a time to get in the game, it's right now. The world is spinning way too fast, and it's not going to slow down. So my brother in Christ, I'm asking you to, to take the small steps to go back to confession. I don't care if you pre-shop. I don't care if you set up an appointment. I don't care if you got to drive to another city and wear a Magoo mask. I don't care. Go to confession, throw up, and walk away. Close the gap between you and the Savior. The further you and I get out, the worse troubles we get in. You're moody, temperamental, angry, condescending, judging, and cursing. I can tell you, it's because you hadn't been to confession. I'm not saying you're not holy, but the average holy person in Proverbs, seven times a day. Don't go for a month, that's 200. Don't go for half a year, uh, 1,200. Don't go for a full year, 2,400 sins. Don't go for a decade, 24,000. My brother in Christ, small steps win the day. This is why I need you to go to confession. If you and I went to one more mass a month, that's 12 more masses a year. St. Alphonsus Liguori said, one mass, one, not 12, one, is more than all the works, blessings, and prayers of her. So imagine if you went to 12, one a month. What if you really doubled down and you went to two? You took that extra step. What if you took the extra step to go to adoration for just five minutes to bend a knee and say, Lord, help me. I just can't carry it. Man, you're tired. You're beat up. I get it. Man, you're so frustrated. You want to have a pity party? Great. Go have a pity party. You're through now? Get back in the game. 
Because small steps win the day. Slow and steady wins the day. My brother Christ, listen to me. The world is spinning too fast. Could you do one more prayer a day? Could you say a prayer before your head hits the pillow? One small step. My brother Christ, listen to me. Faustina goes and talks to the souls in purgatory, and she asked them, what is your one regret? Their answer was, if we had gone to one more mass. So why is it that you and I are on this side, and it's almost like we got to pull teeth to get people to go back to the sacraments? I'm telling you, listen to me. If you were too far away, take that extra step to close the gap. Man, take that extra step to stop taking that extra drink. Take that extra step to turn your computer off. Pornography is killing us. I'm telling you, it is the most dominant sin in the day. It is already down in our grammar schools. That cell phone is killing us. And here's the irony. They're telling me things that if you had heard it from your children's mouth, you would have gone screaming into the night. And there's nothing I can do about it. My brothers Christ, I'm telling you, it is the most dominant sin in our game. Take that extra step to turn off those cell phones when you sit with your family. Turn those cell phones off when you go and sit and visit. Turn those computers off when you're sitting and visiting with your family. For the love of Christ, can you turn the television off for a minute and just sit and visit? I'm telling you, time is short. The world is spinning too fast. It's not going to get better just because. My brother Christ, I'm begging you. Even the snails made it to the ark. Small steps, and I'll leave you with this. My brother Christ, a small step in the right direction. A small step in the right direction will be the biggest and greatest step you've ever made in your life. Small steps. Amen. 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 There we go. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Whew. Okay. <laughs> Give me a minute. <laughs>